Hello, my friends, and welcome back. Thank you very much for being with me again today. We have the former uh, Israeli Prime Minister, Bennett, who had an interview for about, what, five hours? And uh, he disclosed a lot of interesting things over there, but he spoke like he was a Russian asset, uh, according to uh, <clears throat> some. He made some claims, um, one of them being that uh, he asked uh, Putin uh, not to boom boom uh, Zelensky and Putin says mm, it's okay no yeah blah blah that's one of them and the other one is um, a, a re a revelation that uh, really uh, it's not a revelation it's maybe a, a, a confirmation of something that could be because we don't know if this guy tells the truth so uh, but uh, I think it's just uh, from my perspective, he says something that uh, I think that not only me, but many other people um, had questions about. So let's see this article and see what is this all about. This article comes from Russia Today and uh, you can ignore where it comes from because uh, if uh, it's from the interview that he conducted. So Russia just uh, uses, um, you know, the quotation, uh, they, they quote the guy, so it's not something that uh, um, they made up. Yeah, they could interpret certain things in a certain way, but we're smart enough to uh, dodge those, I, I hope, right? And this is uh, from February 5, 2023. West, and I'm qu quoting, blocked Russia-Ukraine peace process, former Israeli Prime Minister. Both Moscow and Kiev appeared to have been ready for a ceasefire. Naftali Bennett said. This is the guy right here. Naftali Bennett. All right, so um, peace might have been agreed between Russia and Ukraine shortly after the start of the conflict, but Kiev Western backers blocked the negotiations between the two neighbors. Former Israeli Prime Minister Naftali Bennett, who mediated those contacts, has said. Now, this is not quotation here, okay? Just so you know. Uh, <clears throat> this is paraphrasing. On the other hand, uh, I read in another article, I don't know if this, I didn't read this article, I just read the title and I said, yeah, I know exactly what these guys are going to talk about. So uh, I read another article, or at least uh, the same skimmed through it, and it said that the Russians and Ukrainians met five times in, from uh, late February and early March. Five times, did you know that? I didn't know that, but hey, Bennett who uh, gave an almost five hour long video interview to Israel's Channel 12 on Saturday, claimed that his efforts as a middleman came close to succeeding as both Moscow and Kiev appeared to be ready to make concessions and agree to a truce. It didn't happen because, and now I'm quoting according to the um, um, Russians here, I think there was a legitimate decision by the West to keep striking Ru I say, Russian President Vladimir Putin. I mean the more aggressive approach, he said. When asked by the host if the US and its allies, and I'm quoting, blocked the peace process between Moscow and Kiev, the former Prime Minister replied, basically, yes, they blocked it. And I'm quoting again, I claim there was a good chance of reaching a ceasefire, but I'm not claiming it was the right thing. He clarified. And here, this is uh, the interview here. Bennett speaks out. So this is the interview. Close that. Uh, I started a little bit, but it's it's right here where uh, Bennett speaks with uh, the other guy. And it's in English right here, subtitles. So you can go and get the exact... This is the Prime Minister, former Prime Minister. You can get the exact whatever he said if you got, what, f uh, five hours, four hours and 50 minutes. Now, Russia's foreign ministry spokeswoman, Maria Zakharova, reacted to the re revelations by the Israeli politician on Telegram, saying that there were, they were, and I'm quoting, yet another confession, end quote, that the West wasn't interested in peace in Ukraine. According to Bennett, his mediation, and I'm quoting, was coordinated down to the last detail with the US, France, and Germany. Do you guys remember when uh, I said, on a few occasions that maybe if you watched uh, previous videos, I said it anyway a few times, that 
when Romania is quiet and you don't hear anything about Romania, and Romania is next to Ukraine, uh, that means Romania is doing a lot. If it's not doing much, you're going to hear about Romania. This, that, uh, if there's something that Romania does right now, I'm 99% I'm certain it does a lot of things. A lot of things happen through, you, through Romania and in Romania. And the same thing is with Israel. I didn't hear anything about Israel since the beginning of the war until, um, I don't know, a few, maybe two, three weeks after Netanyahu won and all that. Nothing about that. Now they said they're going to maybe provide the Ukrainians with the defense air systems and maybe with some uh, things, war things, things like this, evasive. And now uh, it comes, I mean, it shows that these guys were very active as well. They were in coordination. Why was Israel in coordination with US, uh, Germany and uh, France? Wasn't that? Or why is Great Britain? Because those guys are, have to be somewhere. With US, France and Germany. Uh, why? What does Israel have to do with Zelensky, Vizmihal or Ukraine or Reznikov or Yermak? Why would, why is not, uh, let's put it out, uh, other way, why is not Zimbabwe, why isn't Zimbabwe involved? I mean, it had, I think, the same uh, uh, status as Israel. Why was, I don't know, Honduras or Pakistan or something like that? Or Bulgaria, which is closer, or Romania, but Israel. Well, we'll never find out, I guess. I'm surprised that Bennett spills the beans so uh, uh, early. I expected this kind of information to get him in 10 years or 5 years. So, according to Bennett, his mediation, and I'm quoting, was coordinated down to the last details with the US, France and Germany. End quote. After the conflict broke out last February, there was no unified approach on how to deal with it among Western leaders as, in parentheses, British Prime Minister Boris Johnson adopted the aggressive line. German Chancellor Olaf Scholz and French President Emmanuel Macron were more pragmatic and US President Joe Biden was both, he said. Uh, I'm always coming to this thing, which is what uh, General de Gaulle of France used to say when he had meetings with these guys in international affairs. He said, remember two things. Great Britain is an island and the United States doesn't live in Europe. Who are the most belligerent over there? The Brits. Why? Because the Brits a doctrine is never had a power, strong, a strong power in Europe, in the you know, in the how should I put it, in the territory of the continent. Why? So they can come in and do whatever. That's one of the, their, their their doctrines. I mean, I didn't just fart it out right now. And United States is even further that dictates what happens in Europe. Because they're gonna come and help. You remember, it's like you have a neighbor and you have a bad relationship with your neighbor here, but you're friends with someone from uh, 50 towns away from you. But you and that's going to help you against your neighbor. Instead of mending your, mending your fences with your neighbor right here. It makes no... Uh, but anyway, what do you expect? Too much interest. Too much interest. So some 17 or 18 drafts of the peace deal between Moscow and Kiev had been prepared with his involvement. The former Prime Minister said Bennett claimed that, among other things, he managed to secure a pledge from Putin that was not going to kill Ukrainian President Vladimir, Vladimir Zelensky, who feared for his life. The Russian leader, who was also ready to re uh, retract his demand for the demilitarization of Ukraine, while Zelensky promised to give up on his aspirations to join NATO. He added, all discussion about peace ended on April 1st, 2022, when the Ukrainian authorities accused the Russian military of killing civilians in the Kiev suburb of Bucha, Bennett pointing out, pointed out. The claim by Kiev, which Moscow rejected and described as being fabricated, came shortly after the two sides held a high-profile meeting in Istanbul and appeared to have been making progress towards an agreement. Russian and Ukrainian representatives haven't met at a negotiation table since then. Moscow remains, maintains that it's ready to resolve the crisis through diplomatic means, but says that the peace proposals being voiced by Kiev and its Western backers have so far, have so far been unacceptable. All right, well, this is what Bennett, according to the Russians, 
said, I don't know if uh, wherever you live, in whatever free country you live, if, uh, and I'm not promoting uh, this uh, media outlet, maybe you can find it on YouTube, I don't know, or maybe you can find it somewhere else, uh, but since you have access here to YouTube, maybe you can go and find the interview, five hours interview with uh, Bennett on YouTube. And uh, <clears throat> it had, uh, as I said, English subtitles, you can read it, and uh, maybe you can speak, uh, I don't know, whatever they speak, I don't know. Hebraic or you know whatever I don't want to insult anybody by uh, miss uh, miss blah 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 their language okay so anyway in this case um, I don't know this guy uh, Bennett is speaking as I said like uh, he lost power so I don't know how he thinks saying that these things are gonna get him back in power because he's saying certain things too early I mean, he, he, he got out, uh, what, a month ago or so? And Netanyahu is back in business. Um, anyway, I don't know the, the politics over there, the in, in politics in, uh, in Israel. But um, everything this guy said, everything, being the one with Putin, I said it many times, Putin has, or Russia has no interest in killing uh, that weasel, Zelensky. Why? Because he's a weasel. He's a clown. He's a tool. That's not his. Uh, he, he's nothing, nothing, that is nothing, nothing. If that guy dies, natural causes or something like that, then it's going to come another one. And uh, from the Russian, pers the Russian perspective, those guys are not the ones that really make the decision. Did you hear over there? The whole thing was prepared by whom? Did you hear the name uh, Ukraine over there? When Bennett said everything was uh, discussed, how do you say here? To the last detail uh, between right he said his mediation was and I'm, co I'm quoting was coordinated out down to the last detail with the US France and Germany and the Brits did you hear Ukraine over there I didn't hear Ukraine <laughs> the, it's uh, I mean it's about Ukraine but Ukraine is I'm pretty sure Ukraine was informed about I mean Ukraine was like this guys if you help me if you help us then you're gonna have some leverage, you're gonna have some say in all this. If you don't help us, we're just gonna probably uh, talk to the Russians. I'm, I'm suspecting something like this. Remember this advice, never allow your in-laws or your parents to get involved in your family. So if you're married, do not allow your in-laws or your parents to get involved and let's say give you a loan or help you with something, unless you're certain that they are not those kinds of people that will get involved in your decisions. Hey, hey, we're going to say something. Well, why? Because we helped you with that. Fuck off. Here is your money. Get whatever. So don't do that unless you're certain that your family is normal family. OK, so the same here. When Ukraine said, well, uh, what should we do with the Russians? When those guys came in and said, well, we're going to help you, but we need to have some uh, help you. You know what help is and there's no help help is you know something else in a different world so when I'm, we're gonna come here i'm gonna support you we're gonna invest in you we want the return what's gonna be the return and i'm pretty sure they decided what's gonna be the return what's gonna be the uh you know the uh the course of all this there were there were those things were obviously dis discussed to the last detail because it's a lot of money a lot of look what's happening right now Looks how look how much how involved these guys are with the Russians. Ukraine has been for for long just the how should I put it? Uh, and I know I'm going to give a bad, bad example, but I don't really care. Uh, it's like the 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 monkey who rides the bike. That's what all what it is. Uh, the monkey is not building the uh, the bike. Is not uh, maintaining the bike. It's not. It's just using the bike. I'm, I'm, I, no offense, um, meant or whatever, but th that's how it is. They are just using. Without that, they're done. They're, they're done. I don't think they have anything else, like anything else. They don't have anything meaningful to uh, fight these guys. Without those in the West providing them with weapon, this, I think they're done. But that's my assessment. Could be wrong, obviously, but I doubt this could be. It could be wrong. Why? Because these guys are all this. The backers are all desperate. 
send them more, send them more, yes, send them, oh my God, we're gonna get depleted, blah, 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 blah. and the other guy over there, yes, give us more, give us more. And at, at one point, I don't know what's gonna happen, I'm gonna uh, change the industry on a war industry, or what was this gonna be? You know, or not industry, uh, economy, war economy, is that what's gonna happen? We're gonna build uh, weapons to send it to Ukraine and the Russia is gonna be the same thing? They're gonna be some profiteers, and those profiteers, I guarantee you, is not gonna be you or I. You take that, or your children, or my children, or on and on. Thank you very much for being with me again today. Stay strong, stay smart, look for the truth, and be just.